In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the class diagram view to help you generate some of your classes. So I've created a Windows Form application and have done nothing yet. Over here in Solution Explorer, have you ever noticed that you also have a Team Explorer and a class view? If you click on class view, you will see in the toolbar a view class diagram. And the tab says class diagram 1 and you will see that we have here the classes from the Windows Form application. You can also use this to create new classes. The toolbox has now changed. Uh, the tools are now items that you would add when you create a UML class diagram. So let's start by adding a class and I'll call it pet. If you come over to the Solution Explorer, you will notice that there is already a pet class generated as soon as I added that pet. Okay, so what kind of methods might a pet do? So a, pipe, a pet may be fed. Now I'm going to feed a pet. Here is the type it's going to return. It's a void method. And there's the modifier. If I wanted to have um, multiple versions of feed, I can specify some parameters. So I'm going to have feed with no parameters. I'm going to have a feed with type of food. And um, I can even have another feed method, but you can continue adding parameters here. Uh, what types of properties might a pet have? Well, a pet might have a weight. And a weight, let's say it is an integer. But if I open up the pet class, you will see we have here is our weight property. The get and the set are generated. But I want you to note this throw new system.implemented exception. So if you were to access the weight property, it's going to show this exception because you haven't written any code here. So though the tag class diagram kind of generates the outline, the general repeatable stuff for the class, the specific details, it's your job to get. Well, I'm going to go back to the pet class and I'm thinking, well, all properties have a backing field. So now I have the backing field for the weight property. In chapter 10, you will be doing some inheritance. Let's add another class that's going to be a child class of pet. And we'll call this one dog. And repeating the same things, so what can a dog do? The dog can go for a walk. The dog has a breed. The dog can be groomed. And I'll do a backing field for the breed. To show the inheritance, to show that the dog inherits from the pet, you're going to come over and choose inheritance. Click on the child class. Click on the parent class. And we now show inheritance. Over here in the Solution Explorer, you will see we have dogs, and you will see that it's showing that it inherits from pets. Let's add another class, and we'll do a cat. So I've added the methods per, um, the properties life number, since a cat has nine lives, and the backing field for life number. To show inheritance, again, I'm going to do that. Page 611 of the text talks about the concept of polymorphism. So polymorphism allows derived classes to have methods with the same names as the methods in their base class, but yet you can override those methods in the child class. The reason that is allowed is to have consistent method names. Nothing is more confusing than having a method uh, for similar classes with different names. So suppose one method in the pet class is feed, but in the dog class we call feed the dog or feed me, and the cat is fed. Those very confusing. So to be consistent, polymorphism is used in classes for methods and properties so that they're all using the same name. However, they don't always do the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the pet class and just using the example in the text, 
Let's create a make sound. And we're going to go ahead and create the make sound for all three of them. Here is the make sound now in the pet, which is the parent class. What you will need to do to allow the child class to have the same method is to make this virtual. However, before we do this, let's go over to the dog class and you will see that it's kind of yelling at me. It's saying, wait a minute, make sound already exists. I can't recreate another one. It's the same signature. You will add the word virtual here and that's going to allow dog to override. And now we're good. So in the pet class in the book, they used a message box. Um, I would never agree to use uh, a message box inside a class. So I would have actually, um, I would have this message box return a string. Well, they all must over to return a string. And let me go to my cat class. In the textbook, they had the class returning the grr sound. And that's the default. So if we don't override, the sound's going to be grr. But, of course, the dog class, we're going to return a wolf. And in the cat class, we will return the string meow. Now, I mentioned in the textbook they have message box inside of this method on pages 612 and 613. Again, I want to emphasize, you should not be putting in a user interface inside your class unless it's the user interface class. In this case, the user interface class is the form. So what you can do is, if you wanted to, you could create a dog object, an instance of a dog, and then call the make sound. You will return the string then from the make sound and you can display it in a message box but the message box should be done from the form. So suppose someone has a pet lion. So we're going to add another class and call lion and a lion does grr. So we'll, we'll do the inheritance. Not sure what other things that a lion does. But uh, so the lion does grr. We've created an instance of the lion. Notice I didn't do the override this time of the make sound class. Will the lion be able to use the make sound method from the pet class? And the answer is yes. So what happens is if you override in a child class, then the override method will execute. If you do not override that method, it goes back to the parent class and the lion will grr whenever you access that method. I'm in the form class now and I want to create an instance of some of these classes. So notice that I can create an instance of the pet class. And of course I can create an instance of a dog class. So you can create instances of all these classes that we created in the class diagram. However, sometimes the parent class should not be implemented. So the parent class is there just to make the consistency in the method names and in the property names, but you never want to create an instance of that. In that case, you want to create an abstract class. This is discussed on page 621. So an abstract class serves as the base class, but is never instantiated. Notice that we do have in the class diagram view an abstract class, and you could start all over. But since I've already got pet, let's say I want to make pet an abstract class, I can still do that in the source code. Simply adding the term abstract here before the class name will make this an abstract class. Let's come over to the form view. 
And you will now see that since the class is abstract, I cannot create an instance of it. That's really what I wanted to do. So those are the concepts. I would like you to create a class diagram and notice that now a class diagram is added in my Solution Explorer. There are other ways to add a class diagram, but using the class view is an easy way to do that. And I hope you enjoy writing your next program that will involve inheritance in classes.